Well, I don't know everything you talked about on the show on, I guess it would be Saturday, so anything today you didn't talk about yesterday? Probably. <laughs> I don't even remember I was in such a fog with about the Brody Lee stuff, but the, um, so, so apparently, so, so the company knew, you know, um, um, I guess that, um, um, you know, John's wife pretty much told everyone in the company but they didn't want it out so it wasn't out you know um what the situation was with his lungs not working essentially and um he had been hospitalized since the end of october so he um he did the match with cody and the idea was for him to be off for a couple weeks with the idea that he took such a brutal beating and then when he was off that's when he got sick um and I guess that there was the, um, he had gone, like, I guess this would have been after the match, he had done a workout on his Peloton bicycle, and he got really tired, and he couldn't figure out why. You know, he couldn't finish his workout. So, um, and then I guess it was like, you know, um, shortly thereafter, probably maybe a couple weeks after that, maybe two weeks after that, where it got bad, and then... um I don't know all the details. I'm sure that it will all come out in time. But, um, you know, essentially his lungs stopped working and it was it got really grave. And they 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 were aware of, of how grave it was, at least at the end. Um, you know, he was at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. And, um, you know, that was the, the main stuff. But it's such a horrible thing. And I mean, everyone's seen all the different people saying all these things about him and and um i didn't know him well i knew him but um i didn't know him well um but i i mean i knew him i knew him as far as you know his um the situation as far as like the last you know um you know i mean i mean i i knew him well enough to know his thoughts on everything that was going on with his career and his motivations and things like that um and he was you know, he was, uh, when he was in WWE, you know, he's turned 40 and, and, you know, WWE, uh, wasn't going to do anything with him and he knew it and they wanted to, they still wanted to keep him, but they didn't want to do anything with him and he wanted to go and, and, um, there were qualms about it. And his wife was, was actually the one that, that made, you know, I guess made him make the call in the sense of he was, you know, there's, there's stability when you have two young kids. Of working in WWE on a guaranteed contract, although you know, granted, you know, who knows what would have happened with the pandemic, you know. But um, he really wanted, you know. I mean, he was, you know, at, at forty, you kind of like, you know, your time's running out, and you really want to make a mark. And he never really felt that he made the mark that he could have made, and he hoped he could do it in AEW. And it was, just, you know, it was just starting to happen when this happened. And um, he's very, very well liked, very well respected. Um, and I feel so bad for his wife and his kids um, because he's a good guy. He was a good guy and uh, on, really honest guy. I will say that, you know, as far as my dealings with him, um, when, when, we, when we would discuss, you know, his future and everything, he was very, very honest about his thoughts on different matters and, um, you know, what you know, his decision-making process as far as leaving and going, you know, it was more leaving, you know, once he left, obviously AEW was the destination. Um, and, you know, I think some of it, and, and, and I don't know if it was a, a lot, um, you know, I mean, he and Chris Harrington were, you know, like friends for very, very close friends, very, very close friends. And, um, you know, Chris is vice president at AEW. So I knew that when, you know, I knew that when he left that, obviously was going to go to AEW um, if they would take him. And I figured that they would. So, um, that, you know, I knew that that was inevitable that, you know, that that was going to happen. And, um, you know, pe it's just, it's just, uh, just what a, what a, you know, this, this, that was one of those that just came out of nowhere. And I still am having a lot of difficulty processing everything. You know, there's a lot of horrible things about social media, but man, I have not seen an outpouring for somebody, and I don't know if maybe ever, the outpouring for 
for Brody Lee. I mean, from every company, from every wrestler, from just everybody liked him. It's I been mean, he, crazy. He was like a big fan, you know. I mean, that's the thing. He was a big fan. He loved wrestling, and um, you know, did indies for years and years and years. And you know, went to Japan with Dragon Gate as the big monster in Dragon Gate, and um, you know. Went through NXT and and the whole bit and uh, you know it was it was too bad there were there were a couple times you know the one time where they finally I mean like they got behind him with the Wyatt family and then they split the Wyatt family up with no idea what to do just to do it and kind of put him and Luke Harper as a tag team later and then the one time when they they came out with the Bludgeon Brothers idea they were really going to go with them as like the new Road Warriors and you know couple of weeks in eric rowan tears his biceps and it was like that was the 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 end of that you know it's so weird how because the same remember the same thing happened with aop exactly you know like they they were being groomed to be the new road warriors and one of them tore his biceps and then when they came back they're the just, viking raiders same thing happened with them except at least this guy's in the run we're chasing over the 24 7 title but i mean one guy went well, down, and you can't figure out what to do with the other guy. Yeah, but the Viking Raiders were not... I mean, they were not being pushed in that at that heavy thing. They were already just kind of there. I mean, there was a point where... There was a point, you know, when, when Heyman was there where the Viking Raiders were getting something of a push. Um, but they... You know, once those segments with the Street Profits bombed, um, it was it was sort of touchy. They were... You know, the Street Profits were the ones who were going up, and they were the ones who were kind of going to be left behind. But with the um, the Bludgeon Brothers, I mean, they were they were legitimately going to get a big push at that time. They finally decided to go with them as the two big monsters, and then he got you know, um, uh, Rowan got hurt, and then um, John got wrist surgery, figuring that you know, if he didn't get wrist surgery, he was going to be with Eric. You know, I mean, they didn't have a twenty four seven title to chase, but. You could see that that's where they were going. You know, it's like it's like they were just going to beat him to death. So he had a bad wrist anyway. So it was time. It was the time to get the surgery. It really was because um, as a single, they just were going to, you know, well, he's a tag team guy. And then after beating him to death, when Rowan came back, they couldn't put the team together because they would have destroyed him. So him getting the surgery made sense. And then when. They both came back. You know, they decided to go with um, Rowan as the star, and they had no real idea with, with John. But with John, um, you know, they did have that one month where they needed somebody, and so it kind of looked like, you know, because Vince had made the call after the – there's a match on, you know, you could you could look up on the WWE Network um, where he wrestled Dijakovic, and it's a really good match. But that was the match that Vince soured on on John – and and bad so he kind of had to get out and he knew it and um but then they had the issue with because he'd taken so much time off with a wrist surgery that they extended his contract which and you know it's one of those things where they didn't want him but they really like they it's not, it's, i don't say they didn't want him that's not fair to say they didn't want to use him you know it's like they wanted everybody um but they didn't really want to use him but they really didn't want him going somewhere and he, if you remember, he, he gave his notice in public, you know, I mean, he publicly asked because I guess that worked for Sean Spears, but it did not work for him. So, um, they, you know, they graciously gave him his, uh, his release, like, uh, a couple of weeks before his contract was up. So, you know, that was kind of like the timeline. And then he went to AEW and, you know, and unfortunately he was going to get that, that, that big they wanted to debut in rochester where he's from where it would have gotten a really big reaction and um you know that was literally the week the pandemic started so he came in um and you know was the leader of the dark order which was you know obviously matt hardy was the original well there were probably several different people that that were at certain points that you know pegged to be the leader i you know but but matt hardy was at that point and then they decided let's go with Brody lee so he came in and um you know, kind of set the stage, and that group was just, you know, I don't say disaster area, but it was, uh, it 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 had been two months earlier a disaster area, and they were trying to clean it up, and and Brody came in, and the idea was 
to be the intelligent monster um, off because of Bruiser Brody was the intelligent monster. That was his nickname in Japan. So they wanted Brody Lee to do that same thing where he was doing that. And he did the, the Vince character, you know, it was really good. And then, uh, you know, they would do the, the BTE segments and, and silver really started shining. And, uh, and a lot of them did, um, you know, evil Uno and, and all, all of them did to a different degree. Um, you know, Silver and, and now Anna Jay's kind of becoming a star out of that, too. And um, but that was all, you know, the Brody stuff. And um, I don't know what they're doing Wednesday on the show, but obviously they're going to do. I mean, you know, I you can figure, you know, it's not it's going to it's going to be a lot. And um, I, you know, this is this is really a difficult thing. I, I'm going to. The Brody Lee story, and I will do a good Brody Lee story, and it will be, but it's it's not going to be in this coming issue. It'll be the issue after because, um, it's it's just a difficult story to do, and um, I couldn't do him and Danny Hodge in the same week. I just couldn't. Um, I mean, I guess I could. I almost actually yesterday or this morning even said, well, you know, you're just going to do it because somehow it always works out in the end. But I, today I just just figured that. I can do a better Brody story when I can completely focus on that. And right now I'm going to, um, you know, the guys have TV this week, I get to get through the TV and then I'll start working on it after the TV because I want to talk to a lot of those guys there and, um, you know, on that. So, um, so, uh, this week we'll be, I'm going to concentrate on Hodge, which is an incredible story in and of itself. So, Hey, if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 Audio shows at your fingertips.